everyone, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how Flying Lotus makes his drums. As usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And yeah, let's dive in. So, this is the beat you heard in the intro, and the first thing that I have here is the shaker, which sounds like this. So, there's just a simple kind of like shaker sound. Um, this is something I hear in a lot of Flying Lotus's music. Like, if you listen, he uses a ton of these kind of like sort of almost like 90s R&B type shakers, I want to say, like, the kind of thing you would hear in an Aaliyah type beat. Um, so these are definitely pretty important. Like, I would recommend checking out some of these. Um, you can get this one from this video in the description. But yeah, so this shaker, it's just kind of in the background with the rest of the hi-hat type of stuff. Um, and one thing I want to say about this is I use a bit of track delay. So if you don't know what track delay is, it's essentially just this little thing, you you get it by clicking this little D icon down here, and then this little fader over here comes up. And yeah, essentially what it is is you move the con, you can use it to move the contents of your track over to the right, however many milliseconds you set it to. So for example, like with this one, it would be the same thing as if I just literally moved that over, however many milliseconds. It's just a lot easier to use this because you know you don't have to like deal with the weird timing in your project and all that kind of stuff. It, it yeah, it's a really nice way to do it, but the reason why I did this is because it kind of makes the shaker, and you can see all the hi-hat stuff is track delayed. It makes like hi-hats and shakers and stuff like that have this really, really cool groove and sit over the beat really well. So here's what it sounds like with the track delay. And then here's what it sounds like if I take the track delay off of all of this stuff. So yeah, it still has the swing because obviously like the kick but it doesn't have that, like, like the hi-hats don't just sit over it that way that they did before, where they just had that nice kind of, like, like I said, just a nice groove. And they really, it just really sounds, like, very human and, you know, organic because it's not just rigid and, yeah, on computer timing. So that is that. Um, the next sound we have here is hi-hat, which sounds like this. Nothing too special there. It's just playing eighth notes, and I have that track delayed. 10 milliseconds, the same amount as a shaker. And then we just have this little tambourine. So yeah, those are pretty much like the hi-hat kind of things. And the tambourine is track delayed as well. So with these, you can see I didn't do any processing on them. They're really simple sounds. It's just more about building it up the right way. Like, I recommend you really listen to Flying Lotus's tracks, and really anybody that you're trying to sort of emulate like this, and just really analyze them. You'll hear that he uses a lot of layers with his hi-hats. And I mean, it's important because he's making like instrumental beats, you know, you kind of have to do something to make it really interesting. So this is a great way to do it, just layering up the sort of like hi-hat range of the percussion. Um, so then the next thing I want to show you is the snare, which sounds like this. So this is two layers. It's this clap. And then this like snare. So essentially what we have going on is kind of like a softer, more organic sounding clap. And then like a hard, more cranky, almost kind of like a rim shot snare. So they just sort of complement each other. Like this one, like I said, is a little bit softer on the transients and all that kind of stuff. And it's just sort of like, you know, it gives it like that body. But then this is what gives it the impact. So yeah, um, pretty simple there. Now one thing I will note also with both of these, I did it the same amount on both of them since I wanted them to just sound like one instrument. But you'll see I moved the beats back a little bit. So this is kind of similar to track delay. It's sort of like the opposite of what I did with the hi-hats where I moved them over essentially to the right. With this, we just moved them over to the left a little bit. And then, yeah, what this does is it also gives it like a weird kind of more organic groove. Um, if you're familiar with Flying Lotus's production style, and you've read like anything on the internet about how to do it, you've heard of this technique. It's very popular, um, and he's not the only one to do it, but he definitely has done a lot with it. But yeah, it just makes the snare kind of sit in the beat a little bit more, I guess, creatively. Here's you can kind of hear what it sounds like when I play it with just the hi hats. You can hear it starting like right before that beat. It's kind of like, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I think that just gives it. 
like I said, this cool kind of organic feel. And really, if nothing else, it just generates some interest. Like, it just makes something a little bit more interesting in the beat. Um, so then, the next thing that we have here is this ride symbol, which sounds like this. So this is something that is like a really, really big part of Flying Lotus production that I've actually never really talked about in my other videos about him. But yeah, these like reverse little ride symbols, he does this a ton. Like, especially if you listen to like the Cosmo Grandma kind of era, he was doing this a ton back then. And it's a really cool technique. Basically, you take, like here I took a little ride symbol. Here's the original sample. And what I did was I reversed it and then put it in the beat, like on this eighth note here. So it would come right after the snare. So if I play it with the snare, you can hear. It's kind of like, like, it just gives it an interesting kind of thing. And you don't really hear this in a lot of beats, but it's a really cool technique. And it's something, honestly, when I first heard it, I didn't even know what it was back when I, like, first started listening to Flying Lotus music. But, yeah, this is definitely very important. I recommend trying this. Like I said, just get, like, a ride cymbal or something. Just something similar, like a longer kind of like, you can use a chime or something like that. And just reverse it and sort of fit it into the beat in this like interesting rhythmic way like I did here where it's on that eighth note. Um, so then the last drum sound that I'll show you here is the kick. I'm going to show you, there's some more going on here. But yeah, the kick sounds like this. So... It's just playing like this pretty simple kind of like boom bap kick pattern. Um, it's important to mix it up a bit. You can see I made this one a full four bars um, since this beat is just over four bars. As opposed to just like usually if you were making a boom bap beat, you would just do like a bar kick pattern and just copy it over like that. But again, like I was saying with the hi-hats, since these are like instrumental or definitely more production focused beats, you kind of want to do a lot of stuff to make it interesting. So. Yeah, adding variation to the kick pattern is just one way that I recommend to do that. But yeah, this is just a pretty simple kick. You can hear it's not too long, but it's got that like flying lotus kind of vibe. And a little bit of that is the master processing I'm going to talk about in a second as well. But it's just about finding these kind of big like short but powerful and impactful kicks like that. That again have that kind of like boom bap type of feel. But maybe not so much like 90s. Like, I would recommend looking through kind of like the Neptune style drums or like more kind of like Timbaland, like that kind of sound for your percussion and especially for kicks. Um, so then on the master here, I have some processing. Um, I guess if you were just doing this like in a track with other instruments, you would like group these together and just put the processing on the group. But I put it on the master here and this master processing is pretty important. What I have is some pretty strong saturation. It's a pretty strong compression. So here is with no processing on the master what the beat sounds like. So yeah, definitely not that cool. Like it's got the groove, of course, all the layers are there, but it's just not really got that like texture to it. And the reason why this master processing is so important is for this. You can see I did no processing on any of these drums, and you really don't need to when you do processing like this on the group. Like the thing is, is that these are more just like individual sounds, but I'm more focused on like when I'm making a beat like this, I'm more in the mindset of like sort of treating them all as one loop. So that's why I put processing on the master. It's essentially putting effect the same effects on every individual element to kind of like help glue them together because yeah, they just all have the same effect. So it's going to kind of put them there. So that's what the saturator does mostly. Like you can see I have the drive up pretty high. And I'm playing around with the bass frequency and the depth on the analog clip. And you can hear it just gives everything that kind of like grit that really helps glue it together. Because again, everything is getting the same effect. So everything is going to kind of be in that same world. Um, so then the next thing that I have on the master here is this glue compressor. I know some of you may not be the biggest fan of putting such heavy compression on your master. You can see... Yeah, like, it's pretty it's pretty strong. Um, but it sounded pretty good to me. You can see I have the ratio up pretty high, and the attack is up there as well. So it's not really affecting the transient. So the drums are still, like, punchy because they have that transient at the start, like I said. But I have the threshold down pretty low and the makeup gain up. So you can see, like, you can even turn it down more, too, like this, and it would work. Like, 
with Flying Lotus's beats, they tend to be pretty compressed. Like, compression on your master or on, like, multiple things at once, especially drums, can sometimes be bad. But because the beat is so slow and because these sounds are so, like, short and tight, you can still have compression that isn't just going to make everything, like, a big floppy mess, essentially. Like, this will st these drums will still come through as punchy and tight, because they're punchy and tight samples. So it's just about finding the right samples going into it. And then, yeah, knowing how to play with those. So that's pretty much it for this video. Like I said, the main things to think about are, like, layering the hi-hats and the snare to get the right sound. Um, and then that cool technique with the ride. And then the simple, powerful boom bap style kick. And then, of course, the master processing to just put everything in the same sonic world. And, yeah, just kind of tie everything together. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Um, check out my social media, which is on the screen right now. You can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And finally, thank you again, everybody, for watching this tutorial. And I will see you again tomorrow with another one.